All right, welcome back to the channel and the build of our teardrop trailer. So today, before we get started, I got a couple of announcements to make. One is uh, I want to take the time and thank all those who have subscribed to the channel, all those who gave thumbs up, and all those who left comments. Uh, very much appreciated. As I look back, it's you know, it's if people like what you're doing, then that gives you the drive to keep keep going and do more. Uh, it's kind of upsetting when people don't like what you're doing and there's no really drive to, to keep going, but uh, you guys are the reason that I keep coming back uh, you know, week after week and wanting to do more. So hopefully in the future I can continue to do more builds. Uh, I've got a couple ideas in mind for some projects. Uh, they're small and simple, and uh, which is the way we like it, right? Anyway, uh, that's the first announcement. I just wanted to take the time and show appreciation to all those who've subscribed and uh, continue to watch the videos. I uh, appreciate that a lot. The second announcement is about the plans. So as of this stage in the build, uh, the plans will no longer be offered for free. Uh, to date, I think I've given out about 100 sets of plans. People have emailed, showed appreciation. Uh, I've got a lot of pictures of people doing their builds, and uh, that's been pretty exciting. And knowing that there's probably about 80 to 100 uh, teardrop trailers that could possibly be hitting the road uh, with this design. Uh, I'm sure that they slightly modified theirs just a little bit, but uh, that's really cool. Uh, glad to see the progress. and. Uh, really appreciate the people who showed some interest in those plans. But, although the plans aren't offered for free any longer, they are still offered, all you have to do is just email me and I'll tell you how you can get those plans. I don't have Patreon or anything like that, so uh, we'll just make it a real simple process and you can still get the plans. And if you leave your email address and your uh, mailing address, I'll send you something a little extra um, to show my appreciation. So with that all being said, let's get back to our build and let me show you what I've been doing and what I still have to do, what you need to do before we get this top on. So the next stage in our process is our insulation. Now um, this was a 4 by 8 sheet of ply uh, <laughs> plywood. How about insulation? This was a 4x8 sheet of insulation uh, that my neighbor Jack gave me before he uh, left for Boston. And that actually turned out to be the right amount that I need to do the trailer. So I went through and I measured the distance between all of my spars, marked them on a sheet of paper, set up my saw, and cut each one individual. Then I come back and uh, I score a little piece and break it off and then I'm able to slip it in. So what I've been doing so far is installing the insulation. On the uh, sides here where the wiring are I left a little gap and we will put some insulation in here. I'll trim a, trim a piece so it'll fit in there nice and tight and seal that up and not crush my wires down onto the cabin. And when I cut the insulation, I measured from this distance to this distance, and that's what I cut, and so it's a little bit larger. And when you push it in, it compresses and takes the shape of the, uh, the body. So that's working out really good. I still have the areas where my lights are, finish up and this area here where some wiring is and also this area here so when I get ready to cut this piece I'll make a, a notch or a channel in the foam stop about right here on this edge <coughs> and then we'll press that in place and it should take the shape so right now I have things pressed in place and uh, it's nice and tight not gonna fall out yeah, pretty happy with that. And then our ceiling, obviously, is going to come over and follow the contour of that. We will put down a lot of adhesive, 
and just press that in place and then we'll tack down the edges and let the uh, adhesive do its thing in the center so it'll be somewhat of a of a floating ceiling or a roof but the adhesive is what's going to hold it down I don't want to go back through and tack things down here uh, because I don't want any waves in it so uh, that's the plan and then when we get down to this section here because it's a tight radius most likely I'll cut some one inch strips and then uh, lay them down, tape the back, put some adhesive up there and let it follow the contour of this front section here and we'll leave a, a space open for a wiring to come through so when we get when we get the outside on and we get the diamond plate on then we just punch a hole for our fitting fish our wires out with any luck and that should uh, look pretty nice so all in all it's coming right along we should have the top on here in a few weeks then I'll have to make a store run for some adhesive and some phylon and we'll get that covered up and looking really nice then we'll start on the back hatch so I'm still uh, still in the design stage for that uh, I know what I want I just gotta plan it out so when I start on it it's relatively easy the other part of the build that I've completed is this is the faceplate for our electrical area and so this is uh, what's going to have our switches, our USB port, and possibly a reading light up at the top. And I think that turned out really nice. Mahogany always looks nice. So I've got a nice round bull nose edge crust, the edge, and sanded smooth, a couple of coats of Helmsman. This is the spar urethane, it's a clear satin and that gives the the look that I like it's not overly shiny and it's not too dull so I think that's gonna look pretty nice inside alright on with cutting some insulation to finish the top alright to cut our insulation I know I told you that I measured this distance here for uh, our insulation but actually what I did is I measured the uh, area for the radius. So I laid my tape measure on this edge and I come up with about 11 and a quarter. 11 3 16 11 and a quarter. If I go straight ahead like this, I'm going to be probably an eighth inch shy. So I'm following this curve and I'm measuring the curve. That's the width that I'm cutting the insulation. And then when it goes in, because of the spars, they're sort of tapered, that when I push everything down, the insulation is fairly forgiving and it contours to that shape, snugs it in there real tight and solid. So that's how I measured it and how I cut it. And now we just got to cut our width here uh, to fit our wiring, to make our areas for our lighting. I'm probably just going to cut a square section out for the lighting, put a couple of little false pieces in there and then cap it off and leave a little air gap uh, above the lights. I don't, want, uh, I don't want to leave the lights open all the way to the, to the roof because in the, uh, in the event that the lights do get hot or warm, I don't want it distorting the phylon. So we're going to have a, an insulation barrier uh, between the roof and the lights. So that should absorb any heat that uh, the lights emit and protect the top. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's cut a piece of uh, insulation, fill our spot here. We'll cut it to length and then we'll uh, figure out where our notch is going to start. We'll probably come up about three quarters of an inch and make a little notch in our foam. Put that in place and hopefully it covers everything and looks good. So we're going to measure that. I'm looking about 45 and a quarter. And for our edge here, I need to find a piece that's 7 and 1 eighth. So let's go get our foam. 
All right, so we've got our foam and it is seven and one eighth. So next thing we've got to do, measure 45 and a quarter. Grab my pen. Just make a little mark. Then I just take a straight edge. We'll line it up on our mark and I'll just kind of score it. And each pass I just go a little bit deeper. Just like so. Then we take it, snap it open, and then Now we got the piece to length. Now we'll figure out <coughs> our length here before we make the notch on this side right here. So let me go get some measurements, do a couple of little fine cuts, chisel this out, and we'll fit it. All right, so we're gonna take a three quarter inch chunk out here on the bottom. To do that, I've set a T-square at about three quarters of an inch. We're just going to set that on the edge and ride that along there like that and also here across the top. Now our blade is a little longer than a three quarters of an inch. I think it's uh, that's one inch. Perfect. So now I'm going to take a straight edge cut across there an inch deep, set it up here, cut it an inch deep and hopefully pulls right on out of there. So let's get her done. Now let's get in place. So that's how I've been putting in my insulation. It's a nice tight fit and uh, it forms the shape of the body here so that's going to work out fine. Now I just got to cut and fit the rest of it. I have four pieces left. So let me get those in place and then I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, so now we have most of our insulation installed and we've got our little cutouts here for our lights and we'll just put a thin top over those once we get ready and then we still have one area left that we need to uh, put the insulation on and then we're just about ready I still need to uh, make little pieces here to fill these little gaps in, cover my wires, and yeah, and that's about done. I'll give the edge here kind of a, a rough sanding, make sure everything is smooth and ready to accept the top. Then we'll get out our wood, lay it on there, figure out how we're going to clamp it down and tack it, and and then uh, spread our adhesive. So. We're getting real close to putting the roof on, and once that roof is on, we put the file on on that, and then we'll start on the hatch. All right, so I spent the rest of the day cutting little pieces to fit in where the wiring was so I can hide that, and then we finished installing the rest of the insulation. So I'll give you one more shot of what I've got done and what it should look like when you're done, and then. I think we're just about ready to put the top on. So, a couple of little things I need to add, but we'll go over that here in a little bit. Let me give you a shot. So starting here on the top, I went ahead and uh, cut my squares. They're about a half inch thick and set them in place. And then I put some uh, foil tape over top of those. So everything is nice and hidden and flush on the top. And 
and uh, coming around the front. Also finish the uh, front section here at the bottom and left a little area for my wiring so when we put the roof on, put the phylon on, maybe get some diamond plate on, we'll drill a hole right here and uh, hopefully I can fish these wires out without any problem and uh, yeah then we can get the electricity into the thing. Let's see I got one more thing I think you don't know about. So before I buttoned up the back here I added all my little strips here to cover all the wiring. I added one more set of wiring here and I think I'm going to plumb that over. We're going to go straight down into the cabinet, uh, run it this way and then straight down into the cooler area and with any luck I might have a surprise for you. I won't know until tomorrow. Alright, I think that's going to do it for this video. Yeah, it's kind of lean, putting in insulation. And I could probably ramble on for hours, but uh, yeah, I don't like to hear myself talk. So at any rate, insulation's done and the top is ready to go on. So in the next video, uh, we'll begin the installation of our roof and hopefully we'll get some more wiring done inside. We need to still install the faceplate with our switches. I did order a couple of little reading lights that we're going to install at least one of them. And I've got the UB, UB, uh, USB port <laughs> uh, deal that we're going to put in the center of that. And uh, we'll get, the, we'll get the, all that buttoned in and uh, make sure everything works before we really put the top on, uh, just in case there's a little difficulty. So, with that, oh, yeah, I was going to mention, uh, I was going to put a pole, and if it works, it's going to be up here and if I can figure out how to do it. But I was wondering how many people would be interested in one of my shirts. So, handmade. What do you think? Is this something you'd be interested in? If the poll works, go up there and click that link. Let me know what you think and uh, whether it's worth my time and effort. Yep, make them myself, so another project I can keep busy with. So, until uh, until our next video, do stay tuned, give the video a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. Don't miss the up and coming, and uh, we're almost done. Thanks for watching.